So, Marshall, let's start at the basics. You have a really good piece in the Jacobin, the tax debate we need. What is the purpose of modern Republican tax policy? And I guess let's just take it back to the Reagan era. My interpretation of what the Republicans and the broad conservative movement have been up to in tax policy over the last 40 or so years uh, has basically been to reconcentrate power in the hands of the wealthy. Uh, that is to say, the owners and executives of uh, major corporations and their heirs, um, and anyone who exerts power over the economy and the other stakeholders in the corporations that they own and run. Um, I think basically what happened was that in the New Deal um, and in the Progressive Era, um, their power was tamed by many policies, but especially by progressive taxation, because as I explained in that piece, uh, if you crank up progressive tax, taxes high enough, you basically make it de facto illegal to be rich. Um, and once it's de facto illegal to be rich, that weakens the bargaining power of the richest stakeholders in society. Um, and so what happened was the uh, United States adopted a, a strong progressive tax regime, and that had a profound impact on the distribution of power in the economy. Um, it was one that uh, certainly Franklin Roosevelt's political enemies felt acutely and hated him for. And I think that after uh, the New Deal, after the uh, pre the Roosevelt presidency was over, um, they set about a political and ideological project to restore the world that they had lived in, one yeah. in which uh, they exercised more power and one in which progressive taxes were as low as they had been. Yeah, so we're going to get to that because I think it's important to, to, to d describe the sort of the ideological scam that goes along with this just a sort of raw reassertion of elite power with regards to the economy. But elaborate, I mean, when you talk about not allowing people to be rich, and this actually does feed into the mythology, there is a notion that, you know, even amongst the kind of technocratic center, um, and, you know, in the 90s, the kind of, I mean, the third way sort of politicians that sought to carve out some slight sort of softening of basically extreme in income inequality and pretty rapid globalization, but kind of have a couple of areas of slight taxation for wealthy people and slight investments in public services, whether we're talking about Bill Clinton in the United States. And I want to use this quote, even though it's in a British context, but Peter Mandelson, who was an advisor to Tony Blair, he actually said, Specifically, he said, we're intensely relaxed about people getting, uh, you know, extremely wealthy, I think was the quote to paraphrase. So what, but what was it that sort of that Roosevelt and that line of politics understood that in order to have actually some of the sort of genuine open democracy that everybody valorizes um, in their, you know, the, the kind of talk about free speech and having a rational open square and all of the rest of it, that you can't actually credibly make the case that you're having that unless you have a radically even paying, playing field and massive redistribution of resources. Because if you don't, then all the rest of that is just going to be a smoke screen for like the raw assertion of power. And so what was it that made the New Dealers and Roosevelt get that basic insight that we seem like we've been missing ever since, or at least since the 60s? I think that's an incredibly revealing quote from Mandelson, and I think it gets right down to the enormous uh, ideological difference between Roosevelt and the political movement that he represented uh, and the sort of centrist third way that Mandelson represents, and that is uh, quite influential here as well as in the UK. And that is to say, why are rich people rich, and by extension, why are poor people poor? Um, the Roosevelt view, the progressive view, uh, the, the populist view that grew out of the Gilded Age was that, by and large, it was because they exploited society to their own benefit, right. um, or they had inherited from parents who had done that. Right. Um, and uh, the Mandelson view, on the other hand, I think reflects the kind of technocratic ideology of the current age, which is to say that uh, 
essentially the the economy is a meritocracy. If you're rich, it's because you came up with a brilliant idea or were such a um, assiduous manager that um, you were able to uh, contribute and thus were uh, compensated for that that enormous contribution to society. Um, and you can see that that kind of meritocratic view of how the allocate how wealth sh and income should be allocated in the economy would. I would say enable a slippery slope back from kind of the, you could say the technocratic elite centrism that was inaugurated by the Roosevelt age and the new deal back towards the uh, retrograde ideology of the Gilded age. That mm -hmm. is to say, once we're not going to question anymore why rich people are rich, because we assume that it's due to their uh, uh, mastery of the economy to the public benefit, um, then you excuse one after another after another of the uh, uh, actions and um, the exploitations that rich people use to get to where they are and, and remain there. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.